thank you very much, Paul Edward, for uh, speaking to us tonight, and thank you very much for devising this excellent looking menu uh, that we're all very much looking forward to uh, chowing down on this evening. Um, so, just got a few questions for you, and uh, you know, it's basically uh, no, no you know, you're just here for the, the cooking expertise and, 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 and know how. So, um, this off, what, what was your initial impression? Um, when you were approached about devising a Walter Scott themed menu. Uh, I mean, did, did it sound like a silly idea, or uh, was it the sort of thing you're into? Uh, it's actually something I'm, I really enjoy doing. Um, I like sticking my head in, a, in, in some books and doing some research and uh, just coming up with new, new ideas and new dishes. You know, it helps me with my repertoire moving forward. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just something really exciting and something different to get involved in. Okay, right. Um, I mean, you know, it's a Walter Scott theme for me, so the, a, a big question for me is, did you know uh, Scott and his works at all before working on the menu? Um, and, you know, even you know, if so or if not, what was your impression of Walter Scott at the time? Um, truthfully, I, I, I obviously have heard of Scott, um, but now I've never really read anything. Uh, i familiar with a character, let's say Rob Roy. Um, and so, yeah, I just knew him as, uh, as a historical Scottish novelist. Mm -hmm. So it's um, again just something I'm inter in now going to get involved in and interested in. Mm -hmm. And do you have any associations with food at all in your imagination? Not that I knew of at the time, <laughs> but my eyes have definitely been open to that one. Ah, right. Okay, we'll come to that. So, um, what sources did you draw to come up with tonight's menu? And, and what did each of the sources you found uh, do in terms of helping you find your way to Scots? Uh, culinary or gastronomic world? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I turned to the internet to begin with um, and it was actually a very, very useful resource. It took a while to find um, the right pages that I was looking for um, but it was like there's actually someone who's, who's detailed all of, the, all of the Scots works and then the culinary uh, things that he's written about so that kind of really helped me so I could, uh, it could pinpoint the, the, the part of the novels and the actual dishes that he was talking about. Um, I then uh, moved on to Meg Dodd's uh, Cook of Housewives Manual, mm -hmm. um, which has been a really a, a, a fantastic resource. Um, something I've actually really enjoyed reading as well. It's um, you know I'm a chef, so I love a recipe book. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something a little bit different. Um, so yeah, they were the, the my two real resources. Ah, okay. What what do you make of the style of Meg Dodd's uh, cook, cooking manual? reading it as a, as a contemporary yeah. chef? Um, uh, there's so many... Um, uh, it, it, when, it, when, sorry, when, when you first look at it, you think it's really sort of old-fashioned, and um, then as, as you get, go deeper into it, you see that, that some of the ingredients they're using, and uh, some of the techniques, it's all about like French, there's, there's sections about French cuisine in there as well, so um, yeah, it's a really, really good book. Okay, would you recommend it for your average chef? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly going to be an hour reference book that sits prominently on my shelves. Ah, okay. Good, good for Meg Dodds there. <laughs> um, now, talk us through some of the dishes on the menu. Um, maybe some of your favourite dishes. Where are they from? What's going on in them? Um, and, and is there anything kind of historically significant about them? Um, well, I think the... Well, I'm, a, I'm a very keen forager, so um, I'm one of my... First things that I ever learned when I was a, a, a Cub Scout was about nettles. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, we're referencing one of our dishes, we're doing a nettle soup. It's uh, quite simple, we're doing a little bit of a twist on there as well, of course. Um, but I think that I got that one from, that was Rob Roy mentioned um, Andrew Service, the old gardener of Loch Leven. Uh, he used to raise nettles under glass to make a healthy, nutritious spring soup. Mm -hmm. So hence where the, 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 the idea from that one's come from. And um, I think the, 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 the trifle we've got, we've got doing, that's going to be, it's not your usual trifle, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, that one again is from The Bride of Lammermoor, mm -hmm. um, where Scott references the desserts with a fairy feast of uh, almond cream, lemon cream, strawberries and jellies. Oh. So uh, yeah, I think that's, that, that's my... The, the two standout dishes for me, but there you go. 
It's got me wishing that I'd ordered the uh, the trifle. I don't think I don't think that made it onto mine. Ah, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> also, I suppose the, 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 the stove tau tau. Oh yes. Um, yeah, I mean, this is actually a dish that uh, I've cooked previously. Uh, I was I was asked to to, to research some um, old fashioned Scottish cooking, um, and I did this on a German TV show. So it's actually will be the second time I've cooked it, but this time it's going to be, it, this is not going to be done in the traditional way. We're going to do it in a very Wedgwood way, because um, you, you see, there's a lot of cuisine style and and references to in the book where. Um, we're now talking about slow cooking and sous vide and um, using like, all parts of the animal. You know, it's like nose to tail eating. They're really on point things that chefs are doing right now. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like turning it back, turning back the clock as well. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Fergus Henderson, your heart out, doing that, so. doing that a few hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. um, what? What meals or dishes did you come across in your research that you're kind of kicking yourself that you had to leave out for any reason? Oh, um, there's, there's so many. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I love a good Scotch egg, you know, because there's so Oof. many so many cool things you can do with that. <laughs> um, but I think there's, there's just so many, so many references in there to, to different things and like the type of stews and uh, the, all the, the different soups and stuff. There's, there's too many to mention, but there's there is so much that I will take forward and, and use it using my menus moving forward. Uh, okay, right, that's something I was going to come on to um, in in a wee bit. So, so I'll ask it now. I mean, are any of these dishes that we see on on tonight's menu? Do you think they're going to be remaining on the repertoire as is, or aspects of them, or techniques that you're going to take? Yeah, um, the the leek porridge that I have. Um, Done with the the Dunlop bread and butter pudding. Mm. Um, I think that's gonna that's gonna be a, a, a on the, a launched on the new menu when we mm. reopen. Um, so yeah. Oof, I mean, coming right through that door. That sounds delicious. Um, so you've mentioned just then, you know, a lot of the techniques you use in the kitchen, like sous vide and all the nose to tail cooking. It's it's there in in what they're doing in the late eighteenth early nineteenth century. So, but looking looking at it as a whole. How different or similar is the style of cookery that you found in Meg Dodds and found in the references to Scott's works? How is that? How different or similar is that to what you would do now? Um, I think it depends on how you you actually read the book. It could be as far flung and removed as you wanted it as it could be, unless you read it with an open mind and then you can bring it up to date. And then it is it's a very much much modern way of way of cooking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So you'd. Um, yeah, so it might sound a bit old-fashioned as you read it, but yeah, you just substitute sous vide and you've got yourself a <laughs> 21st century uh, kiss that kitchen. Um, so we've, you know, we've talked about how this has affected you know, aspects of cooking and, where, and you know, how you look at maybe historical recipes and so on, but has this affected how you think of Walter Scott? Um, and... You know, does 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 he or Meg Dodd, for that uh, that matter, although that's only a pseudonym, uh, do, do they have a particular legacy in in the kitchen? Um, well, certainly now, yeah. I mean, uh, the 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 Meg Dodds, um, the ma the manual there, that's really something I will really reference to, uh, especially when I'm when I am creating out the the Scottish dishes that I'm renowned for, mm -hmm. um, and I also yeah, I've, I've actually got a two week a few day holiday. Booked away, um, I'm going to take Rob Roy with me, and I'm going to I'm going to read it. Oh, well, that's a fantastic note uh, to end on. Uh, got you know through through cooking right back to reading Scott. Um, so thank you very much for your time, Paul. And it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you, and a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to this menu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.